Hey there! Welcome back to another review, this time of the 1995 anime, Ghost in the Shell. Now, this is a film that was sent to me by Jonathan, uh, Jonathan L., who has graciously sent me a bunch of stuff in the past, and uh, since the new Ghost in the Shell movie, the live-action adaptation, has come out fairly recently, and bombed pretty hard, but it's a movie that I actually did check out, and I will give you my thoughts on later. But since that had come out in theaters, I decided to revisit and watch and do reviews of these of Ghost in the Shell and the sequel, Ghost in the Shell Innocence, as well as the live action adaptation. Now, before I get into the actual review, I want to talk about how this is kind of a milestone for me this is a first this is the first ever anime review for this channel I've never reviewed any anime until this moment I'm not an expert on anime I would not really call myself a big fan because I haven't seen enough of it I've seen a few episodes of Biobooster Armor Giver and I've seen stuff like Dragon Ball Z on reruns on Toonami and I've seen some other things every now and then, but I'm not really that well-versed in anime or manga or any of that. So I'm looking at Ghost in the Shell, the film, from the perspective of somebody who has not read the manga, who has not really had much experience with anime as a whole, except the bare minimum. So maybe my opinions on the film will change down the road when I am introduced and I check out more anime, who knows, uh, but I just wanted to throw that out there, and also, this film also was one of the first anime movies I remember watching, I remember seeing this on VHS when I was uh, in my teens years ago, and I don't remember that much about it, so watching it again was like watching it again for the first time, and my initial first impression after even watching the movie twice, because I watched it before I saw the new Ghost in the Shell, the 2017 live action film, and then I watched it again after I saw that movie, and my initial first impression is, I'm not really that impressed by this movie. I understand it's groundbreaking, it's revolutionary in terms of how it ended up bringing anime into the mainstream. And I respect and I appreciate the film immensely for that. But as a film, as a story, as all of those things, I just wasn't that impressed. Unless we're talking about the visuals. I thought the visuals were impressive. The visuals were great. The animation was absolutely 100% impressive. I just wasn't that impressed with the story or the writing or the characters um, and really with the film as a whole, but there were certain elements of the movie that I did find impressive, that I did like, and ultimately I thought it was okay. I thought it was a decent movie, it's a time waster for me because of the visuals, but I felt it was lacking with the story, with the characterization, could have used a bit more action, um, and, and personally, for me, the, the psycho babble, the pontifications uh, from the puppet master and from Major herself about their place in this world and about what makes somebody human or what makes you who you are and all of this stuff and I just could care less about and I found it to be extremely pretentious and I felt it was very dissonant from the rest of the movie. It's like the movie is going at a pretty good pace it's got this simple but easy to follow plot about this team called Section 9 who is led by Major and she is a robotic shell for a human brain and her and her team are trying to hunt down this cyber criminal. This infamous cyber criminal named the Puppet Master, which honestly I thought was kind of dumb. For it was kind of a dumb name, the Puppet Master, just making me think of the Charles Band movies. And this came out in '95, and I know it's based on a manga that came out in '89. So, but I think, but I mean, I I can't say that I I really heard 
of the Puppet Master before I saw this. I, I mean, I mean, I, you know, after I, I can't say this is the first example of the Puppet Master that I remember hearing. So, but, you know, even though it's not really that big of a deal because I understand why they did that. I thought it was just kind of a dumb title for your cyber criminal, the puppet master. He's the puppet master. He's he's pulling the strings. It just I don't know. And that was pretty much the main plot. That's the main plot. It's a very simple plot. It's a plot that pretty much is only really able to get about thirty minutes of solid, consistent entertainment. But then they fill out the movie with a lot of padding a lot of dialogue and long bits of dialogue that absolutely brings the film down to a screeching halt to me and and also for me personally it like i said it, it feels separate from the rest of the plot and from the rest of the movie and it just serves to make the movie seem more complex and more deep and to make the plot seem like it's there's a lot more going on than there really is. I mean, there's the stuff with trying to find the cyber criminal, the puppet master, and all the while, um, Major is questioning her humanity and who she is and her place in this world. And then they eventually find the puppet master. There's a battle with this spider tank that is all right, but it's anticlimactic because uh, one of the characters just comes in and just shoots it and completely just kind of ruins any bit of, uh, it's very disappointing. It's like Major spending this whole time trying to fight it, and you're thinking she's going to find a way to outsmart it and defeat it, but no, she just gets her ass saved by her partner because he blows up the spider tank with a big gun. And uh, then you have the ending, which is just the Puppet Master... He transfers consciousness into Major because she went into a deep dive into the Puppet Master in order to find out where he is or what his plan is or what he's going to do. And he is pontificating a bunch of psychobabble straight out of a philosophy textbook. Which, I mean, if that's your bag, if that's, if that's the kind of thing that you love and you find to be thought-provoking and interesting, cool. I have no issue with that. I never liked that. I didn't even like that when it was in the Matrix. I don't like any of that shit. I don't like this. I, I'm not a philosophy major. I don't like philosophy stuff. It doesn't interest me. So, I mean, that's one of the problems is that's one of the main themes of this movie is this philosophy stuff. And it just, and, and, but then the other stuff I find more interesting. I find the action bits more interesting. I find the character of Major more interesting. I wanted to know more about her, but I don't get to know shit. Other than, oh, she feels like she's discarded in this world. Like all this trash that's strewn about the city. I mean, it just, it just feels like the movie is empty in terms of its story. It's like, it's just a shell. The movie's called Ghost in the Shell, and it's ironic to me that it feels like the movie itself is a shell. It's a beautiful, pretty-looking shell, but on the inside, there's nothing there. There's no heart, there's no spirit, there's no soul. It's just empty. But, um, yeah, and I didn't really find it to be that thrilling of a movie. I thought the pacing was a bit too slow. The movie... Also, for me personally, had way too much exposition. It felt like it was exposition, the motion picture, for way too much of the running time. And it just was one of those films that I, I, I get it. I mean, James Cameron loves it. There's other directors who love it. There's It's considered to be one of the greatest animes of all time and one of the best films and teach their own. I just thought it was average. I thought it was okay. It was decent. And it honestly reminded me of films I'd rather be watching, like Blade Runner, which predated the manga that this is based on, and the film. And also, a lot of the themes that were present in this, I had read before in William Gibson's Neuromancer, or seen in films like Johnny Mnemonic, which also came, that movie also came out in 1995. So, the film 
it came out in Japan. It was a huge hit. But it got a limited theatrical release in the U.S. and didn't really do that well. But it was a pretty big hit on the home video market, which in turn started this sort of anime boom. Uh, and uh, that's a great thing. I think that's a wonderful thing that I absolutely am really respectful of the film for. And it's directed by Mamoru Oshii as a screenplay by Kaz Kazunori Ito. Uh, based on Ghost in the Shell by Masum Masumi Shiro, forgive me, I, I mean, if I'm mispronouncing these Japanese names, my bad, I probably am, I'm not Japanese, I don't know Japanese, uh, I'm just trying to do my best. Uh, it featured music by Ken Kenji Kawai, Kawai and uh, that's definitely one of the things I, I, I really liked about the film, other than the animation. Uh, which was a groundbreaking mix of CGI and uh, hand cell drawn animation. Might not be hand cell, but just hand drawn animation. Hand cell doesn't exist. I, I meant to say cell drawn, you know, hand drawn cell animation, but I, I got I got the words mixed up. But I mean, the animation is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, there are certain shots in this film that are just beautiful. They're a work of art, and I will have to admit, though, the film is uh, definitely a bit stronger with the subtitles than with the uh, with with the Japanese dialogue and the English subtitles than the English dub because the English dub is pretty is not really that great. Uh, at least for me personally, I, I I have no offense to the people who did the dub dubbing work here. I, I just thought it was pretty amateur, and and I, I thought Akira definitely had better English dub than uh ghost in the shell did and i ultimately do prefer akira over this as well um that's a revolutionary uh critically acclaimed anime that i actually really do like but this one it just didn't really grab me and i think a lot of it it's the writing the screenplay by kazunori ito uh i i really felt that it didn't bother to have any sort of characterization for these characters. And they were interesting. Major was interesting. She's this brain that's put inside this robot body. And she's questioning who she is. And trying to discover her identity. And it has some interesting themes about what makes us human. You have the whole thing where the puppet master, he wants to become human. That's one of his... That's his main goal because he's a bunch of data streams and he wants to find a way to be able to reproduce and die like a human does. And he's not able to do that. And he wants to be able to do that. So there's some interesting themes going around with that as well, of course, with uh, technology and man's misuse of it and so on. And, and, the, and it felt like a lot of the themes, the deeper themes the film was showing me or talking to me about I felt were just expanded upon way too much you had these lines of dialogue that just felt so cold and unnatural and I understand that's the point because it's like some data stream that's talking but even when major is talking it didn't really feel like it was there was a lot of humanity there and and, and that might be the whole point of the movie it's trying to be as cold and as emotionless and as devoid of humanity as possible but I just think that doesn't translate very well to me personally that doesn't end up grabbing me as an audience member there's nothing for me to latch on to there's no characters to latch on to there's not no really reason to care about the story or how it unfolds because there's no connection with these characters and I really didn't feel that the film screenplay really bothered to even do that so, I mean, you have the characters Motoko the Major, you had Bato, you had Togusa, a Chief Aramaki, and some of these other people, but you don't know that much about them. And I've heard some good things about an anime series, TV series, which is a spinoff of this called Standalone Complex, which expands upon more of that stuff and the team of Section 9, and I'm actually curious about it. And I will definitely check that out sometime. 
because I'm actually pretty curious about that. I want to see, I, I, the characters on the surface are interesting enough to me that I want to know more about them, but, and that's why I just felt this film was lacking in that area because you don't know, get to know that much about them. But yeah, I mean, there are a lot of things I, I, I did like about the movie. The visuals, I love the hardcore graphic violence. It was it was really refreshing to see that in an animated form. And um, I honestly wanted to see more of that. But the little bit that I did see was refreshing. And it was definitely exciting. It had a lot of energy to it. And I, I like the concepts and the ideas uh major's suit that enables her to camouflage uh the section 9 team of enhanced police officers or special ops with enhanced abilities and cybernetic implants who are trying to hunt down cyber criminals i think that's a really cool idea that could make for a really great anime series and for a lot of great potential spin-offs and actions and you know sequences i just felt that the film itself it would just go it went at a really slow pace it felt like the st the plot didn't really start to get going until an hour into the movie and the movie's only 82 minutes and then by the 20 minute mark i mean the hour and 20 minute mark the movie's over and then a lot of these questions the film was asking were never answered and it just left me wanting more it felt like a tv pilot for a 90s mid 90s ghost in the shell animated series anime tv show that didn't get did not get picked up and i mean because you had such an anticlimactic ending she it's been the movie's been building up this whole time to this deep dive and it doesn't really feel like it's that big of a deal just a bunch of psycho babble that to me personally doesn't do it anything for me and I've heard it before in other movies before and since. And it didn't seem like it was done as pretentious in those films or in those stories that I've read or seen on film as it was here. And then you also have you know, this. It's just an ending that's like, oh, there's really not much to it. The puppet master leaves the shell, goes off into the interwebs essentially he leaves a part of him with a major sh her shell her original shell is broken so she ends up in a shell which looks like a schoolgirl, which is weird and then she has one last last deep thought that she says to the camera and then the movie ends and i'm like i don't really understand because she goes off on her own to try to figure out continue to figure out who she is and and what's going on with this connection that she now has with the puppet master we don't even know who the puppet master is either he's just a puppet master and, and if 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 we did know i blinked and i missed it but um yeah i mean other than the score the visuals some of the action and some of the concepts and themes in the movie I can't say I loved it. I can't say I was gung ho about Ghost in the Shell, because I really wasn't. I and uh, you know, but hey, that's just me personally. That's just my personal opinion. I know a lot of people love this movie. They think it's a masterpiece. They think it's a classic. They think it's one of the best movies ever, and that's great. That's cool. I'm glad you can get enjoyment and love and really appreciate and enjoy a film that I personally didn't find to live up to those expectations or I didn't personally find to be that great. I'm glad. At the end of the day, I'm glad that, that, there, that people love this movie because that means that the world is still a very interesting place and I am, I am always pleased when I see things like that, when I see different opinions. And this is just my opinion. And I just thought it was just, eh, it was just, it was okay. It was there. It was all right. But yeah, I wasn't 
really that enthralled by it and overall it's, it's a time waster for me it's a time waster and I don't know what else to say about the movie the anime except if I was going to rate it out of five stars I would give the movie three three out of five stars it's it's there I'm glad I have it I respect its place in history but I'm not what you would call a big fan Anyway, thank you for watching, and as always, I will see you guys later. See ya.